I guess it's a GKCS. Uh, we are talking about a problem from Hacker Earth, which is based on graphs, and the name is Waves. So you are starting on the source node, and there are many destination nodes that you have, many possible destinations that you can get to. You need to get to all of them using the shortest possible path. Okay, and here's the tricky bit. Getting to the node with the shortest possible path is what you need to do, but you also need to count the number of combinations of shortest possible paths that are there. Right. What I mean by that is, look at the node 6. From source to get to 6, there are two shortest possible ways. Which is from source you get to 4, that adds 12 to your count. So from source you go to 4, you go to 5, and then you go to 6. So in terms of cost that is 12 plus 7 plus 9 which is equal to 28. Right, and have a look at source to 2. So source to 2, just write that down over here. Source to 2 to 7 and then to 6, that is source to 6 again, gives you 16 plus 4, which is 20 plus 8, which is 28. Alright, both these paths are equal, they are the shortest possible, but they're different. Now your job is to find out the number of different ways by which you can get to every city. All right? And overall your job is to actually just multiply the number of different ways that you can get to each city. Because that will give you the number of different combinations of shortest path visits that you can have. Uh, for a more detailed description of the question, you can have a link. Uh, look at the link below. Uh, but that's what the problem is. You need to find out all possible combinations of all shortest paths. Right, so you can break it down to just find the number of combinations of shortest paths for one destination. Okay. All right. So the way to solve this is to use Dijkstra, which we talked about in the previous video. Uh, it's a little different from what we discussed in the previous video in the sense that we were looking for the shortest possible path in the previous video, so we didn't care about equal paths. In this scenario, we need to take this into consideration and then actually uh, develop our answer based on this extra criteria. So here are the shortest distances to every node from the source node. Uh, I have added the running of this algorithm in the description below if you want to have a look at that. Uh, it's just extra actually. So the interesting thing here is 6 which is and the, the distance 28 can be got through two different ways. So how do we actually note that down? One of the things that we said is, at the end of the day, we need to find the number of ways to get to 1. Multiply that by the number of ways we can get to 2. Multiply that by the number of ways we can get to 3 and so on and so forth. So this is a trivial operation. It's going to take us order and time to do that. The interesting thing though is to find the number of ways that we can actually get to 1 or we can get to 6. So what we are seeing is that we need to store some data based on the number of possible ways, the number of possible shortest ways to get to a particular city and Dijkstra's does that. So the Dijkstra's algorithm says that if you use an intermediate city to get to a city U, you are checking for some conditions. So the condition should be that this is greater than using the distance of an intermediate city. So going from I to U is actually lesser than going to you directly. That would be the condition. But this condition is nice. If this occurs, we discard all our previous ways to get to city U and just take this particular way. There's just one way now. So let's store the number of ways that we can get to U in a count array. Count of U. This will be set to one. That's one condition. What's the second condition? d of u can actually be less than d of i plus d of i comma u. If this happens, should we update count? No, it doesn't make sense because uh, this distance is worse. This is not going to affect the count of the number of shortest ways that we have because this is not a shortest way. Alright, so this is the second condition. Nothing happens to count. First condition. This is what happens to count. And finally, 
the third condition, this is looking like nodes actually, I'll just use a different color. So, three, rather two, and this is one. And the third condition, which is the most interesting one, of course, is that if d of u is equal to d of i plus d of i u, but you're using an intermediate and it gives you the exact same distance that you had earlier, then you say that count of u is equal to is equal to what? Logically, you can see that something needs to be added to this, right? The number of ways to get to u has to be added, but by how much? Two possibilities mainly. Uh, you're using an intermediate city, so should it be added by plus equal to? count of i, the intermediate city, or should it be equal to count plus one. Right, take your time, try to think of which, uh, which uh, condition you should use. The answer is a uh, little surprisingly this. Okay, you just add one to the count variable of u. So the shortest possible way is uh, to get to the city u is added by just one. The reason for this is because you have already taken into consideration all the shortest possible ways that you could get to i. So you don't need to add that to u. All right. Of course, logically, you have a set. You have a set of visited cities. Like in Dijkstra's, you have a set of visit visited cities. And that is a a fixed set, it's not going to change, it's concrete. So what you're looking for is from that set, from that set of visited cities, let's say this, how many ways can I touch this city? So this is one way from five, and the only other way is from four. Okay, the number of ways that you can go to five is irrelevant because it's already been taken into consideration when you have created this set. All that matters is the number of ways you can get to six, using different cities from your visited set. So once you're using phi as an intermediate city, what's going to happen is just one has to be added to the count of six. If, if that is the shortest possible distance that you have found till this point. So we have this condition being used instead of using count of phi. Okay. All right. And that's it. All you need to do after this is multiply all the counts from i equal to 1 to n and that will give you the answer. So of course this is going to be a large number so in the competition there was a mod number given to us, I think some prime number and that was the answer that we needed to print out. So dp with graphs is done. The next topic was going to be digit DP, but I'll keep that on hold. There's too much dynamic programming going on recently. Uh, what I'll be picking up is wavelet trees. It's a it's something new that I've learned, and it seems very interesting. Also, I'll be taking a few polls and asking your suggestions for topics. Uh, and uh, please feel free to, of course, leave them in the comments below. If you have any doubts or suggestions for this, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be seeing you next time very soon. So stay tuned.